Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? How are you guys doing? Hey, what is up? Whoa, my camera is zoomed out over here. Let me check this real quick for you guys. There we go. Much better. How's everyone doing? It's been a week. Less than a week, actually, if you've stayed for... Uh, if you watched Monday's stream on the Maxon channel and ZBrush channel. Uh, I did a demystifying post-production episode. And I'll be doing it next Monday as well. So, it's been less than a week. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yo, 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 what's up, Joji? Vabika. How are you guys doing? All right. So, uh, for those of you who have been on my Discord server, you probably know where this is going today. There was one little thing that I forgot to to mention last week. Anthony Scarcelli. I'm I hope I don't, I'm not butchering any names. <laughs> Anthony Scarcelli, what's up, man? Yeah, it was crazy. The summit was crazy. I mean, I'm still I'm still hangover from from the summit. So yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Like the summit to me, it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience, I have to be honest. It was great. All right, so first and foremost, let's get the pleasantries out of the way. So let me go here to my little scene over here, just so you guys know what I've been doing. Oh, wait, I haven't switched the camera. Sorry. <laughs> okay, here it is. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to go through the process of creating uh all of this thing these things that i've been doing outside of stream but this is sort of where we want to get at first uh i just wanted to to show you guys how this is go coming along the um, the the time machine right from dragon ball so yeah so first things first before this before this section you probably read the description so it's uh it's going to be uh, part two, sort of like the Q&A from last week. Because one thing that I forgot to mention last week was doing the IMM curve thing with the UVs. Okay, there was a question that came up for people who are, who are just now, well, they're watching my stream for the first time. There was a question that came up on the Discord server regarding uh, IMM curve brushes and IMM tripart curve brushes. Let's just call them curve brushes right from now on this is a long name imm tripart curve brush so if you guys haven't watched it and you guys are curious about how to create your own curve brushes how to uh, easily create ornaments around a neck piece or around whatever you want there's my last stream from last week last saturday not the demystifying post-production that's not but the last building worlds stream we covered that for like the first half of the stream, okay? So that's all covered there if you guys want to watch it. If you guys want me to demo it again, I can do it again. Doesn't it, You just put that on chat and I'll do it. So no worries there. But one of the things that I forgot to mention was that in order for you to retain UVs on your meshes, you need something that you need your, your the UV, you need the mesh that you're drawing your curve on to have UVs, okay? So let's say, for example, that let's create an IMM real quick. So let's let's go over here. Let me just borrow one of these, okay? So I'm gonna borrow one of these. Um, Mike would call it steel, but you know, let's say it's this one. Doesn't really matter, okay? So uh, let's say we're gonna do this uh, hose, maybe this one. Yeah, so something like this, right? So this is a, a tripart brush. And this means that there's a polygroup uh, section here. There's a polygroup here. And these two are going to be on the tips of your curve. And the one in the middle 
is going to be repeated and welded, right? So this effectively is going to be something like this, right? So one thing you want to do before anything else, actually, let me just check something real quick. So if I do this, control A. Okay, so they're not welded currently, but you can weld that via the curve um, modifiers. So, okay, let's create some UVs, like some real quick UVs, just so you guys see what I mean. So let's control W to create a polygroup. Let's expand this and let's create UVs like that, right? So there's like a polygroup right there and that's really quick. Go over here to UV master and let's uh, go polygroup, turn off symmetry and do unwrap, All right? So this has now some UVs to it, right? So it has at least eight tiles of uvs so now what happens if i go over here down here with uv map and i morph it well before i'm morphing it i need to down this bump to zero and if i morph it and turn on isolate mode so these are effectively my uvs right they're kind of all over the place but it doesn't for this example it works right so we have some uvs and if we go over here to texture map and let's apply uh, let's actually go new texture. Oh, wow. It's not letting me do the texture. <laughs> okay. So let's turn off texturing. There's UV. So let's say surface noise, for example. Let's see if it works. Yes, it is working. There we go. Okay. So let's try something over here. Let's import a texture. Let me see if I can find some. Let's import. Uh, let's see. Texture. Cord. Okay. Yeah, let's try something like this. Okay, so let's save this over here. Let's save it. Okay, this. Sorry, guys, I forgot to import this open image there we go save image no big deal okay so let's import this over here all right and oh it's not letting me doing the texture okay there we go okay it's the brush okay if you have an imm brush it doesn't work especially if it doesn't have uvs okay so if i click here it's kind of wonky because the uvs are are badly cut but if it didn't have any UVs, it would tell me, right? It wouldn't even let me put the texture on, okay? So we have UVs. We can turn this off for now. And now we want to create the IMM like so, okay? So if we do something like this, it's going to be drawn from the outside in. So let's just create an IMM real quick. So create insert mesh. Let's create a new one. So this is going to be effectively a normal IMM brush, okay? So this model, let's let's do it in another, another example. But let's let's turn on curve mode first, because we wanna we want this to be a curve, and then we oh wait I forgot. So for your curve to work, it needs to be down up right. So it needs to be upright. So let's do this again. Create insert mesh. Let's append. So now we have two. One that's wrongly oriented. So this one is fine. It's working, but it's not a triparts, right? So we need to go over here to the brush palette, go down to modifiers. It's triparts. Oh, right. Jesus, what's wrong with me today? So we need polygroups again. <laughs> Sorry. So one polygroup over here, and now let's auto group real quick. So we have two different polygroups. Let me just do this and do this. All right, so we have three polygroups. Again, let's append this new um, IMM. And let's delete the others because we don't need the others. So let's go to create, delete mesh. Let's go over here, delete mesh. And now this one should work. Now if I just draw it, it is working. It's just not welding together, right? So we need to click, press this button, weld points. Again, this is all on the previous stream. And now it's welding together, okay? So... This is kind of working, okay? So if we do something like this, it is kind of working. If we go to our actually army curve uh, brush, you can see 
the settings and then just copy these over but it's sort of like the same thing but the cool thing what i wanted to show you guys is that if you guys want to have a something that has uvs in your curve brush okay so you need to draw this the imm itself has uvs but you need to go over to a mesh let's say this one let's make poly mesh 3d let's just uh i don't know just select these over here poly group and then just i don't know whatever just do some quick um uv master with poly group on one wrap so now they have uvs this one has uvs okay so now i'm gonna duplicate this and here i'm gonna go back to a point where it didn't have uvs okay so the difference here is if i draw this here and even if i split it into a separate mesh afterwards split unmasked so now it's his own sub tool right and if i turn on the texture map and bring oh wait let me go clay build up and bring this over here you can see that these are not these are not the same uvs okay but if we do the same thing over here and if we, we can actually see well it, it has uvs okay because this one oh geez it's a primitive so it has like default uvs this this one let's just switch this to something that ha doesn't have uvs so something like this so now if I go over here, you can see there's no UVs. The, the default cylinders and, and cubes, etc., that come from the toolbox over here, they all have UVs, like default UVs. So this one doesn't. So if I draw this, whoops, let me draw this one over here and now split it again. So if I go over here to split unmasked points, this is actually in the subtool palette. If you guys, because this is my custom menu, split. Split on mass points is right over here. Sub tool, split, split on mass points. Okay, so now we have another one and this one doesn't have UVs. You can see it doesn't. And if I do new texture, let's go back to our clay buildup brush and then try to put this here. You can see it's telling me, hey, there's no UVs, okay? If you want it to have UVs, you have to draw it, draw the IMM on a mesh that already has uvs on a sub tool all right because the uvs is a per sub tool thing if this uh, sub tool has uvs and you draw it it's gonna have the it's gonna retain the imm uvs okay but if it does if it doesn't then there's no no way you can get uvs there you have to redo the uv thing which can be kind of bothersome so let's say you have an ornament or something and you kind of you're you're feeling like i don't want to texture you have an ornament that's kind of repeated all over either your character or your model or whatever and you want to do imms and you don't want to you don't want to um, basically take too much uv space you could just texture you can just do the uvs and texture the actual imm brush that you're using over here like this one for example just uv bake whatever texture this and then use it on your character with uvs and then you don't even need to texture it right because it already has textures maybe they're a little distorted or something and you can tweak that after the fact the uvs are the same so technically you can just change the texture later on without having to rebake everything if you're in a games pipeline that's sort of like the thing you want to aim for right so reusability and non-destructiveness all over so this was one thing that i i forgot to to mention last week the the uv thing and i know that question popped up on the discord server so again if you guys have any, any questions that you want me to cover like a, a, a substantial section of the stream or you want me to answer when i'm not live if i if i'm available you know you can just type it in on the Discord server. And now I'm going to do the shameless plug section, which is sharing my Discord server. <laughs> so let me copy this link over here and let's see. Okay, there it is. So if you join the Discord server, I'm going to, I'll be active. I promise. I'll try to be more active, but I am at least once a day. I check, I try to check the, the Discord server and to see if there's any questions and if there is, I try to, to answer them as fast as I can. So please do 
do post your questions and post your work in progress as well. I've been seeing some very cool Halloween uh, themed uh, work on the server, which is great because this was like an unofficial kind of challenge that Ian Robinson uh, mentioned on stream as well on the demystifying the post-production stream. And, and people have just been going at it, which is great. Right, let me check the chat over here. And then, um, oh, <laughs> how many industry giants in attendance? No pressure, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 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 and the first time here, bro. Can you give me a brief? What is your designation? And what do you do? All right. So I'm an uh, I'm an environment artist. Okay, an environment technical artist, and I work primarily for real real time in Unreal Engine five, and I use ZBrush a lot. I use ZBrush for mostly like 95% of my workflow when it comes to modeling and texturing. Um, I use ZBrush and Substance heavily, you know. And uh, but yeah, so that's that's the gist of it. And I'm uh, here uh, on ZBrush Live, so that's all I do. Uh, okay, that's my experience. Uh, I was wondering if there's a chance to overall thickness of an object to set it to equal over for reference. I'm sculpting a mask for 3D printing, like the opposite facing normals, moving further, closer to each other. I thought. Okay, so do you do you refer rec blazer, right? Do you are you thinking like how to measure thickness on a 3D printing model? Is that is that a cu your question? Not really sure. If it's to measure the thickness of, a, of an object, I would use a live Boolean scale master kind of workflow. And I'm going to plug them in here. I mean, I'm not a 3D printing expert. I know a lot because I, I, I was I, I'm mentioning this every stream. I feel like I'm being, you know, very repetitive, but it's it's fine. You're you're new here. It's fine. So I'm going to do uh, I'm going to link to you a presentation from IBC, which is Ian Robinson's presentation. Um, Maxon, let's see. Okay, so it's on the Maxon channel. There's IBC and I think that was, it's day one. Not sure, let me see. I think it was day two of IBC. There was a presentation. It started off the day with Ian Robinson, Jonas and Ellie, Ellie Wade. So there was like ZBrush, Cinema 4D for effects and and particle effects, and then Ellie Wade with simulations in Cinema 4D and Redshift. The in the Ian Robinson presentation was basically exactly what you're asking. So this is the Gothic environment thing. This is not it. Two weeks ago. Where's Ian Robinson? So, Ian, sorry, this is taking a little bit long. So Ian Robinson, Jesus, I can't find it. Maybe they only have like the full on IBC presentation. IBC, okay, there it is. So it's day two. Of that, I'm pretty sure. It's day two. And it's over here. Yeah, so if you go to minute to 23. To 20, actually earlier. So the presentation starts on minute 18. So I'm going to post this here. So there's, there's this presentation where he actually goes through step-by-step step how to measure thickness on models. But it's basically a transpose scale master workflow with some live booleans. And it's fairly simple, okay? I just don't have an example here for you that I can, that I can just pluck up. I'll, I'll be sure to do that for later models. Maybe make a 3D printing ready diorama or something. But yeah, just go watch that that stream. Just the the Ian Robinson presentation covers everything you need to know about uh, live using the live bullions and scale master workflow for for measuring thickness. Okay, which software is easier to learn? User friendly with 3ds Mac. I mean, I'm kind of 
I mean, I wouldn't put ZBrush on the same on the same um, spectrum as the other softwares you mentioned because it's kind of its own different thing. I always consider like Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, Blender into this group, which is like a generalist kind of DCC app, right? And ZBrush is its own part of the pipeline. It doesn't mean it depends on what you're doing, right? If you're just doing 3D printing, you can do everything. ZBrush, of course, you can just do, um, you can just go, uh, you need a slicing program if you're doing 3D printing, right? But when it comes to games and film, ZBrush doesn't replace all the other software and the other software don't replace ZBrush. It's just a different part of the pipeline, right? So I'm a little biased because I'm primarily a Maya user for 10 years. I've been uh, using Maya for 10 years and uh, and I love ZBrush. So, I mean, that question is kind of unfair because it's it depends, right? And you, when it comes to like easy to learn, I would say ZBrush is easy to learn because there's so many tutorials online that it's crazy. And you have official tutorials online uh, in Cineversity and Z Classroom, which go like literally step by step. I mean, just look up Michael Pavlovich's YouTube channel and you'll find like an entire playlist of like five hours or something of introduction to ZBrush, which is insane, right? So I usually go that route. Blender, I'm not a Blender guy. 3ds Max, I haven't touched it since like the first time I touched 3D, which was what was my first software actually, it was 3ds Max. And so, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know if that, kind of answered your question but you know it is zbrush is quirky in terms of ui compared to those other software but it is easier than most people give it credit for and it, once you get through that initial kind of mentality if you're used to other software you're coming into zbrush it's kind of weird it's very different than any other software but it, once you get through that it's it's easier like just to learn new features it's way easier like so yeah ginger burst is standard for texture yeah okay yeah that was it sorry like my brain is just not at full speed today so i created it when i am in brush and i created a curve and then locked both points and when it was moving okay okay so so the locking points it's kind of like when you go over here to your in your curve brush to the stroke and you do this right you bend the start and you lock end. If you lock start and bend the start, this, this, this doesn't work, right? Because it either bends or locks, right? So what you want to do is you want to pick which part of it is bending, right? Which part of it is going to go crazy once you move it. Because if you have a bend start and you move it, everything from the point you clicked on the curve to the start is going to bend and deform. And everything else is going to stay fixed, right? And this is for if you want to move a certain section of your curve, right? If you want everything to bend, just type in both of them. So if you do something like this, for example, and then you just go with your curve brush and you move it, you can see everything is bending, right? But if you do something like this, for example, going into stroke, turn off bend start, and then just move it, you can see that there's a section there that is not bending. It's moving because it's trying to project to the surface. It has projection on, right? But it's not like it's it's bending, okay? So another thing that you need to do, once you lock start and you do this, you can see it's locking. It's just that it's, it's projecting there, okay? So let's turn off bend start. And you can see it's like, it's literally not bending the curve, right? It's not doing anything. So this is kind of how it works. Like if you, if you go stroke and you go without anything, you just move, you just move the whole curve, right? It's still moving a little bit again, because it's colliding with this object. If I do this, right. And then collide, you can see the curve. It's kind of colliding with that. But if you do, uh, let's say bend end, for example, and then just move it away. You can see it's bending from here where I clicked to the end of the curve, but not before. Okay. So, and then if you have both, it's going to bend both. So if I'm going to move and everything is going to bend except the point where I'm touching. Okay. So 
now if i go over here let me just control z a little bit and go over here and do a lock start and move it you can see it's trying to fix that to that point so it's kind of different the bend and the lock right so bending is actually does it deform the curve itself okay locking is trying to make the curve that start or end stay where it is right so if you want to straighten out this curve, you just go over here, try to push this out. And now you have a straight curve. It's a little twisty, but that's because we've been moving it like crazy. But we can just go over here, do this, just move it, wiggle it up a little bit, and then just push it out, out, out of the screen, basically. So just go like that and just move this out like that. Okay, so now you have like this tube right here. I don't know if that was your question, if that answered your question. How old are you? What was your first job? Are you going to fix that? Answer your question. Okay, so I'm not I'm not uh, officially working for, for ZBrush. I'm a ZBrush live streamer. I'm a freelance 3D environment artist. And before that, I was studying at Escape Studios. I studied game art for so it's basically heavy in Unreal Engine 5. And before that, I was a teacher for five years. So I did teach uh, the basics and fundamentals of 3D modeling, texturing, baking uh, to people from like ninth grade until like college level. So like first year college sort of thing. So that was my background. And before then, I was a fine artist for like seven years, basically. So I was learning drawing from life and then doing commissions for the last three years of my fine art. So three years fine art in between teaching five years. Then I decided to take a master's degree at Escape Studios and now here I am, freelancing environment artist. And before then I was a self-taught enthusiast, basically. Maya and Unreal. So yeah, I've been figuring out and playing around with Unreal since Unreal Engine 3, like UDK, you know, like Gears of War generation. So yeah. Currently working as Amazon as a junior 3D artist, I'm going to switch to game environment design my game development. Sorry, I have tips. Uh, if you're if you're talking like tips on salary, that kind of depends. That depends where you're located. Depends where the company's located. There's a lot of variables to that, and depends on the cost of living as well of the place you're located, right? So it's very different if the company is located in, for example, here in Portugal, or if the company is located in the U.S. And depending on which state in the U.S. as well. So, yeah. Oh, I'm glad that helped. Okay. Space Cadets. It's a Spear Chuck Hugawa. I hope I'm not butchering any names, man. All right. So, this covers up the, the section of the Q&A with IMMs. I want to go over another question that came through other channels. But it was a question related, and I have it right here. Let me pop this out. And how would be, does polypaint work with layer stacking for texturing? Does it work like Substance Painter? No. Substance Painter is a little different, okay? So Substance Painter has a lot of other, uh, like, generators and, and, um, and blending modes, let's say, like Photoshop, right, to their layers. Layers in ZBrush are a little different, okay? So I have this little cube over here. It's a Dynamesh cube. And I'm gonna show you guys a little something. So I'm gonna go to my standard. Actually, I'm gonna go to my paintbrush. So paintbrush. And the paintbrush is basically just a standard brush with zero Z intensity, just RGB turned on. So basically if I do this, whoops, if I go and do this, I'm painting on the surface, right? So what polypaint is, and I think most people get this wrong, polypaint is vertex information, okay? So polypaint is vertex color. It's the same thing, okay? So that's why if you lower this resolution over here, and let's say I'll do this. Oh, Jesus, I need to actually deform this. So mm. let me go Z add. So if I lower this, and now you can see the poly paint is kind of blurry all of a sudden, okay? So this means that the poly paint is assigning a particular color to a point, to a vertex, right? So it's vertex color. 
So this means that it's ZBrush interprets poly paint the same way you interpret a sculpting uh, stroke. So if you sculpt on here, it's giving a particular information per vertex, per vertex, and then pushing it out. Okay, poly paint is basically assigning vertex color. So it's a little different than substance because substance is what you're actually doing when you're painting on a 3D model. You're not actually painting on a 3D model. You're painting on a 2D texture. Substance just displays that to you, just displays the 3D model uh, with the, the UV unwrap that you have for that model. Okay, so UV's workflow versus vertex color workflow is a little different. Okay, and poly paint, that's why uh, the layer system here doesn't work exactly like like it would in something like substance okay because it's information assigned per vertex and you can't have two types of information contradicting each other on one vertex okay you can't say a vertex is let's say this value these three values and at the same time this value right like the vertex itself has these slots let's say and you can have only have one number on each slot but what you can do because the layer system kind of works like in a, a deformation kind of hierarchy what you can do is like let's just apply a static color over here so i'm gonna apply mrgb i'm gonna apply this uh well the basic materials kind of kind of works so let's go to color fill and this is our our model so we're filling it with the material and a color so mrgb because in zbrush you can paint materials per vertex it's kind of like in any other application right like maya blender cinema 4d you can actually assign a particular material to particular components like faces or vertices or whatever so it's the same thing but you can paint that here because it's zbrush right so when you go over here i want to choose a different color right now so i have this green right and now i want to create a layer so if i go over here to a layer let's turn off z add and let's go just rgb so if i paint with this layer you can see that i'm painting with on the vertex the vertex right on the vertices so if i go really close you can start to see like this is kind of blurry it has like a gradient based on the focal shift if i go like minus 100 percent on the focal shift you can see it's still kind of blurry in essence and if i really press down hard you can see it's kind of it has like some aliasing there it's not real aliasing it's more like the the geometry right so it has color on this on this vertex and then this vertex and then this vertex but not here okay so this has been recorded on this layer now i'm going to create another layer now this one is in recording mode and if i switch to like a red and start painting i'm basically overriding the color okay i'm not just overlaying color i'm not doing multiply i'm not doing any of that stuff that's photoshop and substance painter because they work with 2d textures what you can do is you can actually use this to bake into a texture but that's a whole different ball game you're still painting on the geometry and then transferring that into uh, a texture so now if i turn off rec which is recording and then I can actually stack these, like it's been recorded into that vertex. But that's because it's individually looking at each vertex and seeing, okay, this vertex has kind of 0.64 of this information and, and maybe 100% of that other information, which is this green, right? So it's kind of interpolating between both, okay? It's a little different. It, it will never work like Substance Painter because the system isn't designed for that, okay? It's different. So it gives you a lot of other possibilities that Substance doesn't, right? Like masking actual geometry and creating polypaint from that or applying this as polypaint and then baking that into a color ID in Substance, which is something I do a lot, all right? Well, there's no, like... You know there's no there's no way to do like multiply you know like in in uh, not that i know of i'm pretty sure there isn't because this isn't a 2d texture what you're thinking is photoshop blend modes right and you can do that with uh those are blending modes what do you mean like this 
I mean, I don't know of any any blending modes here. It might might be wrong though. I just know intensity. Then there's like some animation data here, like deformation. This is for like morph targets and stuff, you know. So it's literally on or off, and you can turn it negative, which is basically the same thing, you know. It's because it's poly paint, right? If it was sculpting data, if I turn on this and go in with the standard brush, Z add, turn off RGB and just start sculpting. I can actually then just invert this entire stroke. So it's basically either 100% or minus 100%. No, there aren't. That's at least not to my extent. Yeah, but those are for the textures. Again, like under the brush and alpha and textures, there are blending modes probably but this is textures right so this these are already to the images what i mean is poly paint doesn't have that because poly paint is not a texture it's vertex color okay you can bake this into a texture and then use multiple textures to blend or whatever but that's a whole different thing it doesn't work like substance the question was uh is there proper layer stacking for texturing like in substance painter or 3d coat right it's like it, there is kind of layer stacking, but not to the same extent because it's it isn't designed for that. Yeah, exactly. It's the same as like Maya Vertex Paint. It, the difference here is that you can actually use the brushes to paint on the surface, right? You're exactly right. All right. So this answer, I think, answered the question uh, regarding poly paint layers and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go and move on to the our little uh, time machine. Let me just control Z this curve. Doesn't need to be here. So you might be wondering how I created, how I made this. Let me just uh, do another viewing mode. And let's just bring back some of these because I don't want the environment to distract us, right? So these are subtool view sets. So uh, it's not this one. This is the wrong one. And I have the previous one from the other stream, so we can start from there. But I just wanted to show you guys what I, how I did this first. So there's this one. There's this one. And then there's this one too. This one. And then there's the body itself. And then there's, oh, live booleans, of course. And then there's this. These are subtractive brushes. And uh, these are all like, a lot of these are just live booleans working in conjunction. So I think it's this one as well. There we go. Yeah, so this is kind of where, where I'm at with the, with the spaceship. And you can see it has some engine work over there, some array mesh. So for this, which is sort of what we'll be doing, uh, well, not just this, but this section as well. I did it a little differently than what you guys saw me doing last week. I used nano mesh. Okay. Yeah. Majin Buu. <laughs> That's my, my cam view right there. Um, I'm planning, I did the destroyed version because I want to have a section where we actually go through the process of creating a cam view. There's already videos online about that, including one from Ian Robinson from one of his streams. Uh, this was like way back when, when he wasn't, uh, you know, a Maxon trainer. But I actually learned from that video. So, and we're going to do the cam view for this baby right over here and the fact that it has a hole there it makes it easy to then just say okay this is like from this side it's like the front and then from this side we can have like the hope there like drawn on like in the series right and um and the state this is the back and then have anything in between be like you know whatever view you want so nano mesh okay so we want to have something like this and last time I tried to do it Z modeler in via Z modeler, which is cool. You can do that as well, but it, it was giving me wonky results. And what I get right here, it's, I feel a little better. 
It's just because it matches perfectly and it gives us non-destructive kind of uh, reusability, let's say. So we can actually do stuff and then just pluck in a mesh here and then tweak it after the fact without having to redo everything. Subtool viewer is why I quit ZBrush. I couldn't deal with that nonsense. Oh, okay. That, that's cool. <laughs> that's good to know. Nano mesh is so cool. Yeah, nano mesh is amazing. Nano mesh is is one of the coolest features out there. I don't use it that often because when I use it is for something like this, right? So we have yeah. Oh, oh, right. I'm missing that part over there. So let's go right there. I didn't name any of this, which is my bad. I should actually. I'll do this after the stream. <laughs> to rename this other thing. So let's go over here. Mm, where is it though? Well, wow. is this here? Yeah, there you go. Name your subtools, guys. So so you don't get this issue. So let me go to view one, alt tap there. View two, this is it, okay? There you go. So we're, we're, we were missing those kind of flaps over there. Play now. Hey, play now. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, your, your guys' names are so creative, man. <laughs> it's like play now, over studio, Olicron, Goku. I like that name, Goku. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. It's uh, it's been a tiresome week. Uh, I'm uh, moving, so I have to take. Uh, you have to look for apartments and stuff like that. It's it's been crazy. So, so yeah. Oh, this is m missing the array mesh over here. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Also, one of the things that I did that I didn't do last time was this panel over here is no longer like a separate panel. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm making this interior section where these kind of claws come out and and go in a uh, subtractive boolean basically with array mesh. So now I can just work freely here on the panel lines because again the, these will have some panel lines like those little scribe lines and it's easier to just keep it like a simple shape like this because then we can just subdivide and go using the chisel brush or, or something like that to create our panels okay so that's how i use that's what i used for for the star wars ship all right, so for these over here, I'm going to demo on our previous one. And our previous one is right over here. And you can see where we left off last time. This was kind of, you know, pretty dull. <laughs> but basically, we had something like this. It wasn't actually this one. It was that one. But, you know, this is the block out. So in the block out, we have something like this. I'm going to try to actually extrude this out. So, for example, we didn't have this as a separate thingy, uh, as, a, as a cylinder, actually. We have, if you look it up here, this is actually a, a, kind of like a, an open cylinder, which we can do pretty quickly. Let's just do it over here. So we can go to our handy dandy Z modeler, go over here to this and inset and do, maybe not inset, but let's do polygroup first and then flat island. And just polygroup this and then just tap this one so now we have the same polygroup on the top and bottom so we want to inset the exact same amount right from the top and the bottom so go over here now inset polygroup all because we want this one and that one and just do this and you can see it's doing it on both sides you can also use symmetry but imagine it's not symmetrical so and now we can do a Q mesh. We don't need polygroup all. We can only, you can do polygroup island and there it is. Or if you do polygroup all, they're gonna meet in the center. And that means that there's gonna be an edge loop right there, you know, if you want that. So they meet in the center, right? So that's where it leaves the, the edge loop. Okay, so now what we wanna do is go over here. This is basically under um, geometry crease crease pg so it's crease pg to crease polygroups and now i want to do something real cool so i want to duplicate this and just turn off perspective go over here control drag to have something like this uh, maybe not 
this much something like that or whatever it doesn't matter this is just for the sake of the demo so and then we can go over here whoops and we can do QMesh polygroup island and then just push this out and now we can go maybe polygroup poly loop let's polygroup this poly loop and uh, maybe hmm. Maybe that poly loop as well. Let's have something like this in the middle. And now we want a Q mesh polygroup. Whoops. Q mesh polygroup all. And push this down here. And there we go. One thing I used a lot was radial symmetry as well. Just for the next stage of this. So I want to have this meet there in the middle. And now what I want to do is I want to add a nano mesh on every single one of these polygroups right over here with this color, right? So let me just poly, whoops, let me just polygroup, poly loop this one too. And I want to Q mesh polygroup all, whoops, not polygroup all, polygroup island because these are the same polygroup. So you can do something like this maybe. Then we have this inserted and let's crease PG and we have our little base for that um, that rotating kind of flap thingy. So now if we want some of those details that I was just mentioning earlier, we could just go over here with Z modeler and just go uh, Q mesh, maybe not Q mesh, but extrude. And then if you extrude, maybe polygroup island, it does the whole thing right so you would need to inset and then extrude and then delete and then and it's kind of to give you the same result you'd have to do like a lot more manual work and there's like symmetry that you need to take into account so you need to do radial symmetry i prefer just to have the ability as a user right to go over here i have that model done and model something really quick like this just a scaled down section I could even do some details here. Let me just block in some IMMs here. So let, let's go IMM model kit. This is an amazing IMM brush, 120 meshes right here. And let's say I want something, maybe I want something that's a little different. Or maybe I could just use this, for example. I could just duplicate this mesh because I want two of them. And then I want this one to be like this maybe smaller, a little bit smaller. Let me just hide this one. And now maybe I want to do an extender. So I'm basically stealing sections from that. Oh, okay. So maybe extend this out over here. This is not because of these creases over here. So let me see, I can just actually have let me weld points first. So geometry, modify topology, and weld points. Let's see, let's reset this, full reset. Actually, let's reset. And then weld points, and now let's try again. Let's do extender, it's not gonna work. Yeah, because it, it has an end gone right over there, you see? works sort of like just trying to get one single loop there let's try another one let's go to maybe something like mm, something squarish let's see something like this okay so now we want this one over here and this could be actually done with the IMM uh, brush. I'm going to show a different technique for this. But let's say maybe this or that one inserted right over here. So this has like sub, it's dynamic subdivision. So I can go over here and do like this panel and just drag it onto the surface. Maybe I want to put this right down the middle like that, right? Maybe push it out a little bit whoops something like this right and maybe I want this to be 
let me duplicate this mesh and I want to bring this down I want this basic one as well so and I want this one too and I want this like that all right so careful with your with your poly count though for this you don't need you don't want something that's like too heavy because otherwise it's gonna if you pluck this all over the place which I am planning on it could be problematic so let's inset this whoops let's inset this not, not poly group single poly inset single poly let me just split this it's easier I'm gonna split this and then go back to there we go right if you want a poly group poly loop this over here and now I want maybe this to be a little bigger and this could be a little shorter just a little bit something like that right still works uh, it's actually kind of clipping those so might as well just go to Z modeler and delete this and then do the extender I'm just exemplifying like how you could make your own nano mesh which is basically the same workflow as as using for the um, IMM workflow just go over here let's do Q mesh Q mesh single poly like that and then let's just uh, crease PG and maybe crease 45 and maybe I want to crease this manually crease this 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 and this all right so maybe I want to extend this like that and I want to put the center point whoops I want to put the center point I want to move it there. I don't want any of these. There we go. So I want something like that, let's say. Right? Let me see if I can uncrease this. So uncrease and then just insert an edge loop right over there. There we go. like so okay so let's say we have this this and that so just this one and that one let me just merge these two together so merge merge it down okay there we go so let's create a brush so basically go well first and foremost let me delete this one which is not doing anything over here so delete that one and uh, there we go and then I want to create a brush so go over here insert multi mesh brush and we have both of them right so we what we want is after we have an IMM brush there's a new button here that's called create nano mesh so if I click nano mesh now this is a Z modeler brush because nano mesh is technically a Z modeler brush and now if we go over here to our little thingy we can go over here and instead of saying insert nano mesh to a single poly, let's insert to poly group all. So we can do this or maybe poly group island because I want to show you guys something. So this is the first one and we could just pluck it however we want. doesn't really matter. And then I want to insert another one here. But in this case, I want to insert this one. Just to show you guys what I mean. So that, that's it. This isn't geometry though. Those are instances. So what I want to do is actually because this the pivot is wrong on this one. So I might as well just go over here, go to brush and go to my depth. And you can see the depth is a little different. So I want to push this out a little bit and just go like that. Maybe push this even more. So I want this to, to sit right there, you know, so something 
like that. Yeah, something like the other one, like 83 or something. So it's gonna sit, almost sit on the surface. This is what I want, right? So now if we scroll down here in the tool palette to Nano Mesh, in Nano Mesh, now we have two indexes. And this is like the first one, which is the first stroke we did. And then the second one is this one on the bottom. So we can play around with this, with the width. This is actually the other way around because I redid this. So this is the second one. We can play around with the width. We can play around with the length and the orientation as well. Let's just set this back to default. So like zero over here, maybe not zero, but like 90%, 90 degrees, sorry. And we can do a fill, which is like, okay, this is filling the entire, uh, this is fitting the entire thing. This is actually fitting, filling the, the polygon. We can make it fit. So it's like, or proportional. So it still remains that same proportion. And then if we change the width over here, maybe do a clip. So it's clipping once it goes out of that section. So it's, it's remaining there on that polygon, polygon. And you can see it as it fits nicely over there. So if I turn Shift D off, you can see it, it matches perfectly there, okay? So I wanna make it uh, maybe, yeah, pro proportional kind of works. So I wanna do maybe 0.4, maybe this snaps. Yep, it snaps right there, which is perfect, right? And I actually want this to be let me offset this in the Z a little bit, so something like this. And maybe I don't want, I want this to be maybe something like that. Or maybe not, maybe this is, this was fine. It's just that this one though, it have to be something like this, okay? And maybe I want this to go in, maybe not, a, I don't want this to go out as much. Something like that right mm. there we go so once we set one of these down this is just a demo what we can do is just copy this and bring that other index to the same page so if i paste this it's keeping the same settings as the other one so this is how non-destructive this workflow is and we can rotate this around we can do this all sorts of crazy stuff and this is a very simple model right Hello, uh, Zerat Dragons. Thank you. Thank you so much. So once we get this, we can go down here to inventory and just say one to mesh or all to brush or delete some of them. Replace nano mesh from brush. We could also replace that. If we don't like this one, we can go back here and do replace. And then maybe I want this back again. So replace. Maybe I want the bottom one to be this one so I can replace that one and it keeps the settings, right? So maybe I just want this to, to show you guys what I mean. So there we go. So we have the same thing on the top and the bottom and let's just do one to mesh and one to mesh. And now they're, they're all separate uh, meshes but still in the same um, sub tool, right? So what we want now is actually because I know how many divisions this has, I can turn on radial symmetry on the Y and you can see it's double that, it's actually 16. So let's go 16, and there we go. And now on our Z modeler brush, our regular Z modeler brush, we can go over here to that face over there and do, oh, it's auto saving. I forgot to turn off auto save, Jesus. So, Go over here, go to bridge, two polys, tap that one, tap that one. And now we have them tied together. So one thing I also did was I turned off, I went in and started working on the creasing, still with symmetry on. So I can go over here, do a little crease over there and over there. Smooth subdivisions are kind of funky for some reason this over there Let's up this and 
let me check something over here. Yeah, no divisions over there. So let's do the same thing for the bottom section here. Bridge, and then bridge dot one. And now crease this one, crease that one, crease this one, and it's doing it to every single one of them. So you have something like this. I still feel this is like too pushing out, you know, but it gives me a better result than I used to have. It's just that this pinch over here that I don't really like that. So for that, I actually go over here to insert single edge loop and I do a little bit of a, of some manual support loops around that. And I delete this one. So now I get, not only is it non-destructive because you can actually tweak it on the fly before applying it, before committing to something. And now you have the, the same kind of clean geometry that we had previously. And you can iterate on designs and stuff like that. You can also use IMMs with Mesh Fusion. So here's a cool thing. Let's say you had this, right? And you're like, oh, now after the fact, you want to add something. So you want to go over here, let's say to this IMM model kit or something. And maybe I want to do some cool, weird cylinders, right? So maybe I want to do Mesh Fusion for that. So I want to go over here to uh, Primitives Open. And there's the cool thing. These are all the same. There's two brushes like this. There's Primitives and Primitives H. So the H one is open. That's what I figure. If I go over here to this plane, make Polymesh 3D, and then just steal this you can see it's open on that end and you need the mesh to be open right so i want a cube like this one i want a cylinder actually so let me duplicate this and i want a cylinder like that one or maybe like this one how many divisions does it have maybe something like this right so i want to have this i'm going to call cylinder and i'm gonna call this cube right and these are both open and now i'm gonna steal some other imm this is a, a stealing course today so i'm gonna go to the model kit and i wanna i want maybe hmm, maybe one of these panels or something maybe i want this panel over here I just duplicate this one and I want to do what I want to do is I want to open up this mesh so basically I want to select this and maybe control shift X to expand a little bit and we want to delete this section over here so let's go geometry modify topology delete hidden and this is what we get right we get something like this that's kind of what we want and let's call this panel one because this is the names that the imm brush is going to have so and now i can duplicate this one maybe grab another maybe i want to grab this one for example right i want to grab this one and now i want to delete that Control shift x and geometry modify topology delete hidden this has a problem over here so i want to delete just that section Control shift X and delete hidden. And this is panel number two. Now I want panel number three and let's choose something completely different just for the sake of this demonstration. So I want to have something like this maybe. So like a grid event or something. And now I can just delete this over there. Control shift X and there we go. Geometry modified topology delete hidden. So we have three, and now let's create an IMM brush. And we have this as an IMM brush, and they're all open meshes, right? And if we go over here to our thingy, and you say, all right, I want to paint, let's go back to Z modeler and just paint a polygroup there. If there's a polygroup there, and I go to back to my brush over here. And I drag this like that. 
and then I just do this, it fuses the mesh together. Okay, so let's say I want a little panel over there. And there's not going to be uh, a lot of, you know, this is a high poly, right? So if you want a low poly, you would have to retopo anyway. And now if we do control shift, control drag, and then control drag again. Ah, oh, jeez. I have to drag it out first with an alt button so it goes in. Drag, drag, and that's it. But I want this to be smaller. So let's try something else. Let's try this panel over here, for example. I want this actually to go, to come out like that. And we can even use our gizmo over here to push this out like so. Maybe scale it down a little bit. Let's turn on LSIM for that. So let's do push this in a little bit, something like that, right? And then drag, drag. Whoa, this was kind of a weird result. Mm, yeah, it works with radial symmetry. It's kind of funky. Let's try a cylinder right over here. So let's drag this. And turn off Elson. Ah, it's not working. Yeah, whatever. Just, just drag, drag, and it should weld together. So now if we tap this and push this out, you can see it's welded. Doesn't matter how different the geometry is, it will create those supporting edges over there. So this is kind of cool. This is mesh fusion combined with with the array thing. So we could use array mesh fusion for this. Let's say, whoops. Let's say I want this one and I want to drag it out maybe on a couple of them. So maybe I can go over here to transform, turn this down to like eight. So maybe I want every other to have something like that. Sometimes my gizmo just doesn't snap into the, the mesh for some reason. So I can, I need to tap this like that. And let's just rotate it slightly and push it out, scale it. And now we can drag, drag, and it's not working. Yeah, because it's the same poly group as those ones. All right, doesn't matter. We could also use nano mesh again. Like we could just turn this entire thing into a nano mesh brush and then just say, all right, I want, I want to paint, whoops. I want to paint these polygroups over here. And I want to paint this polygroup over there. Right? And now I can just go polygroup all and say, I want this one over here. Let's do white for now. And I want this one over here, right? You know, you have all these sort of different details. I won't do that because again, this on the concept, it's kind of flat and having this is already kind of too much. It's too out there. Like if you look at the other one that I made, where is it? Ooh, so many, it's not as protruding as the other one. And what I want to do is I want to add all of the details. I'm going to use live booleans, which is what I use for most of them. So this is how I did this little section over here. Of course, much less complicated than what I just show you. But for this, the glass, this is actually a very less hard surfacey um, technique. So let's say on our little example one, we want to, um, this is kind of annoying me. So let me just go back to 16 and let's just select these. And now invert this. Let's alt tap this. And rotate this like so and push this in. Ever so slightly. There we go. Much better. Okay, it's still not as thick, but doesn't really matter. So for this one, what I did, all right. So first of all, I decided to have a separate dome. I think on the last stream we did that. 
and I um, this is just the block out that we initially had so in this case I'm just gonna show you guys so what I want to have is something like that section over there that's kind of separated from the bottom part so I'm gonna do this then go over do auto groups and then we want to select these two auto groups right so we're gonna do the same thing but for this section so now we can actually split this let's do split hidden and now let's go back to where we were before and we can actually not go back to where we were before and just do a close convex hole do something like this and then just select this have its own poly group and now we have a water type mesh over there and this is not water type but I don't want it to be because what I'm gonna do now is basically I want to add thickness to this okay so I'm gonna go down to dynamic subdivision and I'm gonna push up thickness and you can see what's going on it's giving you like non definitive thickness turning off live booleans because and surface noise for some reason was turned on so let's up the sub smooth subdivisions and this is what our glass dome kind of cockpit is going to look like there's also a thing here that i added which was if you if you smooth there's something there which i don't want there's there's like a loop there so what i did was actually i had to rework this because the the original blockout model was kind of wonky so i just paint this poly group We'll just go back to my Z modeler brush and just select this and now go over here the auto groups just in case like this again and uh, geometry modify topology delete hidden and now I want to go over here and do close holes convex holes and I want maybe like one support loop over there or I could even do one and then push it out ever so slightly like that right and have this be an entire polygroup that's a little better but since we're going to destroy this anyway because we're going to have the that hole right doesn't really matter but yeah so this is something I, I decided to mention so I could even inset this do it quick inset polygroup island and set this like there. We're gonna use Sculptures Pro for this, so this is all get, gonna get ruined anyway in terms of topology, right? So this is kind of what we had. If I smooth, doesn't do anything because it's pinching, right? There's a pull. Okay, so what I decided to do was I actually want to not have any smooth subdivisions. I just want the thickness, and I want the thickness maybe a little thicker so we're gonna need to sculpt this right be a little thicker like that and maybe I want this to offset in so it goes in from there to there right it goes in like the glass so maybe I don't want that much thickness maybe something like that and now I want to actually we could do smooth subdivisions like so let me see if it hovers in the air or something move this up a little bit maybe like that we're gonna have a little pattern over there and now I just apply this okay so this is our base for our glass and now what I want because it doesn't give you subdivisions if you add thickness okay so it subdivides and then it it kind of deletes the subdivision and adds thickness so that's the, the thing about having thickness there or you can turn off post subdiv and it gives you the subdivisions. All right. So what I did is basically pretty straightforward. I basically did a live Boolean for this. So I'm going to split this up. Let me just duplicate this and I'm going to have another folder over here. I use folders all the time for live Booleans. I'm going to call this glass just for the sake of the demo. Let's call this glass. Um, main 
And now what I want to do is I want to insert a cylinder here. Cylinder or whatever you want, basically. So let's go cylinder 3D. I want to have I want this to be on the same uh, folder, right? And now I want this to kind of make the hole there. So if I turn on live boolean and turn this to subtractive, well, the other one needs to be hidden. This is what you're getting, okay? It's just like a, a, an actual hole there. So you can have something like this. You can twist it like 45 degrees and then just push it in like that. And you effectively have an egg. So you could do something. Maybe that's a little wider. Something like that, right? And maybe we want this not to be like exactly there, but it doesn't really matter for this example. So we want this to be dynamic subdivisions as well. So turn on dynamic subdiv. You want this to be clean. So maybe more subdivisions. And then once you Boolean, it, it doesn't, it ignores all of that. So, right. So the other thing I did, like after I decided on the general shape of my, of my model. So maybe I don't want to use dynamics. I just actually want to divide this. Maybe like... Or maybe I don't need to divide this. Yeah, I can just move it. So one cool thing is that you can use the move brush to go over here and move this subtractive to make a more less flat shape, if you want. I mean, I didn't, but you can have like a, a less consistent shape, which is a little more true to form, let's say. So something like this. It's fine, right? It's so like our cut will be a little inconsistent, even though it, it's supposed to be like a blast, right? So yeah, it looks like an egg, <laughs> an egg boiler or something. <laughs> I think that was the design, the intentional, like initial design, right? So we have something like this as the subtractive thing. And we're just going to go to this little gear icon over here and Boolean with subdiv. This is going to take a while. Maybe it has a lot of geometry. My computer is heating up. It's, uh, it has RGB, so when when it's red, it's like 90 degrees, 100 degrees Celsius. By the way, <laughs> for all you American viewers, I don't know the conversion. Oh, don't tell me it's gonna crash. Come on. At least we got the auto save. Yeah, it was a uh, the the boolean mesh had too many too much geometry for you know while I'm streaming and stuff. This usually happens. If I'm not streaming, this usually goes without a hitch. Yeah, but I think it definitely crashed. Otherwise, it would go white once you click. Yep. Mm. Let me see. No, it's still working. Hmm. I'm just gonna do this all over again. So just go to ZBrush, crash the entire software, and then just open it up again. There you go. And we have this quick save, which I'm not gonna use to be honest. I'm just gonna go and open up the actual project that we had in the beginning of the stream. I just skim over that section over there and go over here and do the same thing. I'm just gonna go a little faster this time, okay? So I'm just gonna select this, shrink, 
split hidden go back actually not go back I forgot Z modeler thing is we lost our IMMs but it's fine so close convex hole there we go something like that actually something like this and I can now crease PG do this Increase level like two. There we go. Same thing over here. We want this to be no surface noise. Thank you very much. And let's just delete this entire section over here. Delete hidden. Auto groups. And now let's close convex holes. Actually, no, I want to close them, but I want this to be something like that. There we go. And let's take this down here. New folder, let's do class folder. And let's do dynamic subdivision with thickness. And I want to offset this minus 100 and do a little bit of thickness like that. Something like that. Okay. So apply. There we go. We have our little thingy over here. We can smooth this section out. But again, we're going to use live uh, Sculptors Pro for that. So now I want to, maybe I can actually duplicate this and get one of these cylinders or just split. Split unmasked points, go down here and I want to change this to like poly, a cylinder 3D. There we go. So let's just focus on this section. So I want to turn visibility off for that. And we want to make this like that. 45 degrees for now. Turn on live Boolean, subtractive. And it is for some reason not giving me a full subtraction. Oh, right. It has thickness because dynamic has thickness. So that's also something you could do. Like a really cool effect there. So yeah, so something like this would work, right? So you have like the hole there, maybe over here instead of over there, like over here, right? And now this is going to get subtracted. So let's pray a little, see if the Boolean works. So this one doesn't have uh, bully, uh, dynamic subdivisions so might that might be the problem because then it tries to divide it even further and uh, and it goes like to crazy m numbers of polygons so I might as well just apply this uh, dynamic and then just do a regular boolean so let's do like boolean folder yeah it's going way faster now there you go so now we have our uh, glass and you can see the topology is kind of weird but if we're going to use sculptures pro that doesn't really matter and now what i did was so this is like let's call it final glass because i'm very very organized and now i duplicate this one and i'm going to call this destruction and now what i do is i go down to deformation and go to inflate and do a minus two maybe and if we turn on ghost mode you can see it's still there it's just a little inflated inwards and in this section it doesn't really matter because we're going to have those big bulges out so now we can go over here on the one that's inside the glass and use something like our inflate brush to start sculpting 
this whole section over here. But we, what we need to do is actually turn on Sculptures Pro because this still has very weird geometry. So what I do now is I usually go over here to Stroke, Sculptures Pro, and turn this on. And now if I do the inflate thing, just inflate that section over there. Maybe do a little smoothing with the Sculptures Pro on. Keep inflating. Something like that. A little irregular. A little bit of an irregular inflate circular motions smooth now we want maybe a little bit more intensity on this inflate and want to make some some like some random bulges like that so something like this and now one cool thing I need to, to say is that I tweaked the standard brush. So I went to the brush settings over here. And this is like the brush palette, basically. And I went to depth and I want the standard brush to go in a little bit. Turned up the gravity to like 30. Tilted this ever so slightly. And now this is what the standard brush is doing. So let me just go like that. This is what the standard brush is looking like. Which is a little different, it's not that much. So if I go really deep, you can see it's not influencing that. But this is what it's doing as it bulges out, right? So this is for my like strokes like that, you know? So it's like cloth in a sense. It's like the old way of sculpting cloth, you know? So what it's doing, it's basically giving you this. One thing I also did was going to the preferences to edit and there's like an active subtool dimming. If you put it at one, your inactive subtool will not be like a little darker. So this is cool. We can go over here. Let's, let's keep inflating for now. Let's just do some more inflate. Let's go into the surface a little bit and inflate that. can do some more bulges over there also over here it's also a good idea to do over there so you don't show that hard edge right there but it still gives you the idea of having some thickness like that glass being a thick glass if you want to have like thick glass if you don't it's fine just go in and just sculpt that so yeah it's a much less uh, non sculptural way because the rest of the project was kind of you know low poly Z modeler kind of stuff but this is a more organic part of the model so we need to do stuff like this right let's do this right at the end we're gonna still we're gonna fuse these two together into the same mesh, right? But for now, I just wanted to, to bulge these out. Could actually do that right now, but I prefer to, to design first, design where the strokes will be. So I can uninflate this, like Alt, Tap, Inflate, just smooth it out. One other thing I usually do is I turn on back face mask, and now it's not affecting the other side. Yeah, it doesn't work with Sculptures Pro though. You can't have any auto masking with Sculptures Pro. So, just give me a sec. Right. It's basically a more manual kind of approach. And if you have the depth in a little bit, you can actually do like hide the fact that these are like balls being inflated out, right? So I have something like this, maybe. Again, the smaller the brush size, the more geometry you'll get. So this is the geometry right now. It's going to go crazy high at a certain point. 
One thing I also do, if I want to keep this low and very high performance, let's say, is when I remesh by union, I then mark a projection uh, tab on the history and then just do dynamesh and project and then go by my and do the do the whole like uh, sculptures pro workflow. So just sculpt that section. This might be better. Like that smooth it out and uninflate as well like press alt ever so often just to get one other brush that you could use in this case because it's it's glass right is actually the orbs cracks to brush and then just press alt it's giving you this right so it's gonna give you whoops it's gonna give you like this kind of effect Right? If you really want, turn on lazy mouse. Or maybe have this. And then just go. Whoops. Do this. Do like a broad stroke like that. So it's a much more like sculptural kind of workflow to have it look like glass that's a whole different challenge because then it might require some maybe some other uh, indications like some cracks maybe some flatness here and there so it looks like it's bending as it cracks right so and then at the end once you do this whole thing what you want to do is you want to merge both both subtools, right? So you want to go and merge, go to subtool, merge, merge down. And then you want to go to your gizmo deformer. That's this is what I did at least. There's like multiple ways to do this. Anyway, you could do boolean again, but I mean why? Why would you, right? Just go here to our deformers and there's a remesh by union. And this is going to effectively weld everything into its own mesh you can see it's welding both the interior mesh and the outside mesh regardless of how if it's sculptures pro or not and now they're all the same and you can start sculpting now like even without live boolean there's the hole so now you can actually go in with our sculptures pro and just start actually sculpting the entire thing as as one single you know this isn't done by any means, but I can actually do, whoops, whoops, it's the other way, it's like some cracks, and then just To have this sculpted in. This is a solo mode. So now you can actually turn on everything and just check how it looks with the rest of the ship, right? And now just start sculpting away. So this is still, I shouldn't have welded so early, but. It, it works for a demo, right? So if you go inflate over here, maybe I want to inflate this. Because now it's everything is kind of the same mesh. So now we want maybe some bulges here, maybe some cuts, like some irregularities over there to make it look like it's also, one thing I also did is like use the inflate brush, but turn this into like a, a, a spray, maybe a color spray. So it has like some variation and bring in an alpha like, uh, I don't know, maybe something like this. Let's see how this works. Nope, not this one. Definitely this one. 
Mm. Actually, it was the standard brush that I did this with. So standard brush, color spray. If I do color spray like this, it kind of works. But you can actually ha add more to that with some more alphas like that. But if you stick to the like alpha one, just to give some irregularity to it. Do this. And just keep pushing the damage sculpt some smoothing here and there sometimes it goes a little crazy whoops just doing this damage section over here there we go now what we can do uh, I usually run it through a clay polish be before doing this, before welding. But it is kind of working. I mean, for the sake of explanation. And again, as I told you before in the previous projects, you can actually have um, some. Oops can actually go in and use the XM XMD brushes to make this a little looking like something that's cracked. So, all okay, right, this is not finished by any means, but it, you can do, you can, you get the picture, right? So you have something like this, Maybe you can smooth this out on these edges over here. So it welds nicely with the rest of the mesh so we can go something like that maybe you want a cut over there cut whoops a cut over there and a cut over there maybe a smaller cut So you get like this hole that was on the series, right? So this is kind of where cell hatched inside and then burst a hole there and, and went out into the world wreaking havoc. And at the end, again, if you want to convey that this is not some sort of like shell, you want something that's a little cracked, you can come over to the XMD brushes. I told you guys like a few streams ago. I do this all the time and just open up some of the damage brushes like uh, like uh, where is it hmm. let's try this one this is a tiling kind of damage brush but one of the things we need is actually more geometry to support this so if we drag it doesn't look blurry at all so we might just have to pick this, tap this, whoops. So let's just smooth it out, tap this, and then pick a resolution, maybe something like 800 something. Dynamesh this. Actually, I want one polygroup for everything. Dynamesh this. 800. Dynamesh. And now I want this to be with Sculptors Pro. So I could turn on Sculpt. Well, it is. Huh. Why is it not working? Maybe it's the brush size. There you go. Brush size determines how this works. So now if you go down to your alpha, alpha palette, let me just push this in here and let's tweak this alpha so let's go modify and go to our curve here and adjust our curve so it's literally as flat as we can get something like that so now if you do this this is what you're getting of course this is still too noisy so the cool thing about this is that I have uh, you can turn off 
we'll Sculptors Pro for that. We can't have Sculptors Pro for that because otherwise we would use our Morph Brush, Morph Target, because this is still too much, right? So let's turn it down in terms of intensity to have something like that. And then just use the Morph Brush to morph it out, right? So you have some cracks over there. And then we can hand sculpt that as well. So we could do maybe something crazy like that and then sculpt that in. We can actually go to our flatten edge brush and hope this works. Just flatten this edge. Flatten, flatten. Yes. Flatten the surface. There we go. Actually, Trim Dynamic might work better without Sculptors Pro. Can actually use H Polish as well for this. And then go over with our Go maybe try H polish. There we go. Try to polish this to a point. Yep. Then use the orb cracks or the slash. Actually, I think the slash would work better. Yep, works way better. So we can actually add some some of these cracks and emphasize them. have more more emphasis on this cr on these cracks if we were to have this as a an open cockpit we would need to do the same on the other side so i wouldn't do this on a thick mesh like this i would actually use a plane for that and then add the thickness and invert that so yeah so you get the idea right so you can have cracks coming out of this and then use the clay build up which I used for this to sculpt some of these sections a little more to have some more finer some more refinement over here maybe I want this bulge over here I would sculpt this as if I'm sculpting volumes for a character so it's like something like that because this still looks like it's going in like that so you might just go do a little ball over there of clay and just draw out the shape and then just do cross modeling like that there we go using the alt key to help with that so these are not so inconsistent right there we go some more over here go now these need to be bulkier whoops to be bulkier over there let's use sculptures pro turn on sculptures pro again whoops wow this is so slow it wasn't this slow you can just tap this 
Redynamesh. Ah, it had holes, okay. And now reproject. Let's go to project, turn off color, project history. There we go. And now we still have like 500, which is acceptable for Sculptures Pro. Because you want to go below 1 million and use Sculptures Pro to kind of um, up the ante of uh, gradually up your poly count and not just go crazy like 2 million already starting, depending on your, your machine. I mean, my machine is pretty powerful, but sometimes when I'm streaming, it just does weird stuff for some reason. Might need a stream PC in the future. Just have a dedicated machine for streaming. So I can focus on the on the ZBrush work. Hey! DVD. There's a DVD in the chat. There we go. Just keep sculpting. Again, it's it's a very organic kind of workflow. There we go. So we kind of need to have that idea of like it melting, like being burst out, but then the glass kind of folding and melting. This is kind of what I'm aiming for. There we go. Again, this is a very rough sculpt, but that's the idea, right? That's the gist of it. Again, this still needs some irregularities on the inner section. So you can just go over there and start sculpting there as well. Don't ignore the inner section. But it's primarily outside, right? Because the blast comes from outside in, uh, from the inside out, right? So it kind of folds. It has this folding motion. You can actually try something. Let me try something like a fold. This kind of works. You can also use this. Looks like it. Uh, or maybe not. Mm, maybe, but that's, that's not the effect I'm aiming for. Trying to get this to a point. Go over with a smooth brush sometimes just to reduce the poly count a little more or increase it depending on the, this is a big bulge so it needs to go. Like that. Right, so it's like a blast, you know, it looks like too much Maybe it was too much, but you get the point, right? So this is how I did that old section over there. For some reason, this was kind of ruined in the process. Wow, this is weird. All right, yeah, let's ignore that because <laughs> we have a we have the finished one. Right. So and about these engines and boolean things, that's also very fairly easy. Like I use this all the time. I use the extruding. Um, yeah, the fold brush is amazing. The fold brush is, it, it, well, it, it depends on what you're aiming for. Because in this case, it doesn't really work that well for what I want. But it kind of, it is kind of cool what it can do. It's literally folding the geometry. If you turn off Sculptures Pro, look at the geometry, then use the fold. See what it's doing? It's actually folding the geometry. Not, it's not just an alpha going over there. It's literally pushing the geometry into itself. So effectively, if I smooth this, it's still folded, right? Unless you do like a very heavy smooth. 
and you can see how the topology was kind of deforming. So, yeah, it, it, it's kind of like a VDM, but not, <laughs> but with a different stroke pattern, right? And uh, now, all right, let's just ignore this and go to this section over here. So for those patterns there, I don't know if you can see it here, but on the other one, the finished, not finished, but the, the one that I was working on, you can see, well, I'm on the fibers, but you can see I have this. If I turn on live Boolean, some of those are subtractive. Some of those are not, but it's the same brush. So it's basically a, let's go to V2. Oh, wow, V2 was deleted. Oh, right, because it crashed. Yeah, but you can see what's going on. So the these are all Booleans. Once we make the Booleans, it's going to be into like embedded into the mesh. That over there is not a Boolean. That was a, that's actually an array mesh, right? It could have been. I don't know why I did that with array mesh, but you know, it's cool. And these cuts over here, it's one of the workflows I use for uh, panel lines and stuff. Uh, it kind of depends on the project. In this case, I'm going to do a mix of both. Like some of these more intricate, kind of circular panel lines, I want I want them to be perfect. So I might as well just use an IMM curve. And, to, and and use that as a subtractive boolean. And in some sections, when you want something that's more straight, more like, you know, more straight lines and and like patterns like these over here, you know, maybe you can do something with like thick skin and a chisel brush, uh, something like that. Like, for example, if I do, it's this chisel brush, not the chisel 3D, it's chisel brush. So yeah. So what I'm going to do for that is basically I want to have this with some amount of poly count. So let's duplicate this one because I don't want to lose this low poly kind of. We're going to duplicate this one and this is only going to be used for that. For the for the the IMM curve brush. Okay. So one other thing I want to do is I want to make this section over here go down into there actually and maybe delete this one I'm gonna use this one turn off transparency ghost push it out okay so now we have two polygroups there I don't know if you remember but I did put a separate polygroup over there with a with an intent with a reason let's just do less creasing so it's a little rounder and we're gonna apply this so if I apply this one of the cool things I showed you guys a couple of weeks ago I think is to use a frame curve so I'm gonna use this extrude brush extrude profile and this is uh, basically it has these profiles over here and they just if I draw a curve this is this could be used for oh you can't have subdivision levels that's right so no subdivision levels in your imm never forget that delete lower let's turn off the lines just for now if i draw this is basically you could use this for hair or for any other stuff like you know just have oh it's not projecting because it has it's on solo mode huh it's not projecting properly Oh, it's the live Boolean's. Yeah, let's turn offline, solo mode. Huh, it's not projecting. Oh, it is, but it's on the other side for some reason. It's projecting on the other side. Let me just go to brush. Let me just reset this brush. Reset current brush. Sometimes it goes a little crazy like that. I don't know why. Doesn't matter because what we're going to do is actually go to stroke and go to curve functions, turn off everything except polygroups and frame mesh. Now we have a curve there. So if I tap this, we get this profile over here. Oh, I mean, am I in the wrong extrude profile? 
yeah, it's this one. I'm sorry. Wrong brush. <laughs> Extrude Profile 2. The other one's mainly used for hair because it has a decay and stuff. So this is the reason. Yeah, but this is still doing weird stuff. Turn off solo. Uh, I have something turned on here that is not... Hmm. Let's try it again. Nope. Doesn't matter. Again, stroke. Frame mesh. Come over here, tap. And now we have this. If we press dynamic subdivision, no surface noise, please. It welds perfectly around each other, uh, around itself. And it is a nice pattern, right, to have. So it's basically a profile. And we can change that profile just by tapping one of these and then tapping that. And that's it. So we could have something like this, for example. Or maybe we want to have something that's simple, like this lip over there. And we can iterate on both. And we can have, uh, let me try something like this shape over here. We have like three shapes like that. Of course, this in this case, it's not like you're going to see that. Mm, let's do scribe. Maybe a faconer. No, this is too much. This one kind of worked. Yeah, so something like this, right? And now you can go over to your split, split on mass points. You have a separate subtool for that. And then just move it. Move it down like that. General direction. How do you like approach building one? Let's see. Oh, right. Yeah, you're right. Visual Ether. That's right. I have a stored history on another subtool, so it's projecting to that other subtool. So you have to turn that off. You know, if you draw, it's done. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes I just, again, my brain today is just not. <clears throat> right? A little more general question. How do you approach building, uh, building one? Oh, building an environment. Okay, especially size and distance feels really hard to me. Okay, so I usually bring in a human for scale purposes, but I mean, my regular workflow goes from ZBrush to something like Unreal. Okay, so I can use Unreal scale to kind of measure how things are going to be placed and how things are going to be scaled up and down. But that said, if you go to YouTube, to our YouTube channel on ZBrush, there's a stream that's called Demystifying Post-Production. It's about an hour. It's a little more than an hour because it's me talking. So, you know, you know, I like to talk. So if you go over there, there's a spooky scene workflows. And I'm doing a four part series with Dustin Valkima, breaking down how to do environments entirely in ZBrush and then rendering them out using non photoreal filters, NPR filters, and Dustin is going to take this and he's going to do a cool render in Cinema 4D and Redshift. So if you want to go and see like my regular workflow for creating an entire environment, just check out the, that stream. And I'm going to try to break down that section too today. If I have the time, I have like an hour, which I can do. We could do that next after I show you guys this. So. It's a little tease of, it's basically a little repeated of what I did on that stream. So I could just plug that in here. Let me just get that stream in the chat. Yeah, that's the stream. And we're doing that every Monday. So next Monday, 9 p.m., uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, not 9 p.m., 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's going to be the second part where I'll go, I'll go over a lot of the things that I've been talking about here, like creating IMM brushes. But in this case, I'm going to use, I'm going to do IMM assets like I would for like a modular kit for environment art for games. Right. So I'm making modular assets 
and then I'm baking, texturing, UVs, baking, decimation, whatever, in, UV, in ZBrush. Bring them to Substance Painter, apply a smart material that I created previously because it's a one hour stream so I can't do the old texturing from the ground up. But you can texture that in Painter and then how to bring those textures into ZBrush and have them um, be applied to your IMM meshes. So those are IMMs that I actually apply textures to, to that. So that's going to be the next stream and I'm going to show how to do like cobblestone paths how to do like an entire fence with an IMM tripart brush or just a regular IMM and just manually tweaking it and uh, some tombstones and I'm going to try to fit in the slime bridge features in ZBrush which is super cool it's something that I, I don't feel like I've seen a lot of people using but you could do like crazy stuff with that. I use that for the web, the cog webs just going out of the, the tombstones. So that's pretty cool. And I know Patrick uses that too, Slime Bridge. Um, Patrick Forty, uh, Patrick Foley, doing the food streams, you know. is like the, the Hell's Kitchen of ZBrush, right? But is like a solo chef, <laughs> which is cool. The Master Chef program of ZBrush. So I know he uses that and I know a few other people use that, but I don't feel like a lot of people use that. I don't know why, because it's awesome, but you know. All right, so for this, what I did, going over to this again, what I did for, was basically using the slice curve. So I'm gonna control W to get a single poly group here. Let's just delete, whoops. Let's just delete that, that curve. We can do control W and then this remains here. Let's see what happens. Like when I slice this, I know what happens. It crashes. No, I'm kidding. So then I slice this and there's like a perfect edge loop there with a poly group. Let me turn off the lines over there and maybe do something like this. Actually, let me do just a single one though. Something like that. Go to your stroke frame mesh again deletes the other one and now I want something that's a little simpler something like that maybe smaller maybe like a frame like that maybe I want this to go in like embedded into the surface so I want to go to brush to your depth and push it in a little bit if I tap now it's gonna go in this is probably what I want so again now I'm gonna split this again split unmasked points now it's its own sub tool control w for one poly group and now i want to do the other one so i'm going to slice two of them again stroke curve functions frame mesh by poly groups and now i want both scribe lines to be the same so that's why i did two of them at once if i tap this and now i want to preview this and this is the the problem right so if I whoops if I tap this I need to, if, to preview this I need to split them first and then use the live boolean feature right yeah that's gonna be Monday Monday with Dustin Ian and the rest of the team it's gonna be fun yeah it's not it's not gonna be as uh, because like last stream I had so much things to show I'm going to try to focus more on this next stream and be very specific on the IMM workflows. And I'm going to try maybe to fit in the workflow from ZBrush to Substance, Substance to ZBrush. Because uh, week three, it's going to be that and then sending it off to Dustin and showcasing a little bit of... I want to showcase the BPR filters, right? And if I want to showcase BPR filters, I, I would have to... to to try to fit it fit the rest of the content into week two because then from week three like half of the week three stream and the week four that's going to be dustin handling rendering and redshift and all that stuff so so i'm going to try to fit in as much as i can but i mean you guys have me here on the, your regular building worlds program <laughs> like your scheduled show uh so you, i could just answer your questions here anyway and showcase other features that I use all the time. So let's try to split this up, split on mass points, and now do a subtractive here. 
life boolean this is too much so i'm gonna delete this and i'm gonna try to make this smaller like that maybe or maybe i could just do a, your regular like a scribe you can see th these are actual scribe lines this is made to have to do like max and spaceships and stuff like that to make the, the the panel lines i could even make them like super thin like that and this would work actually it's just not framed properly so i can just tap this there you go and now we could have actually just split this so you can see what's going on split on mass points and have this be subtracted and you have those panel lines over there right and these are non destructive again this is still live bullions so the geometry could even be something that's very low poly and then it only goes high poly once you bully in it and this is why a lot of the hard surface work is done in low poly because there's a, so many sub tools there's so many details that you want to do that at the end at the very end so you want to have these workflows that are non-destructive because if i wanted to do this manually i would have to have like something that's crazy in terms of poly count this is already high though this is already one million polygons for for something like this it's very high so if you want to go detailing you might need more than this like maybe 10 million and that's like imagine you would have at the end you would have like 200 sub tools imagine having like you can't even have a million polygons on them so you have to sort of gauge where you want your detail and then just do them one by one and maybe decimate them for once in a while you know and then do the 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 panel lines that way so yeah this is not how the final one is so that section in the middle again is just an imm just going over i can even use this subtractive one and just go imm boolean there's a whole section of boolean imms i'm just gonna pick one so you guys can see what i mean so if i drag this over here this is what you're getting and i'm gonna do this 90 degrees i have something like this I don't know like something like that right there's like a latch there for some reason it looks like a bee a bee and an egg which is weird so yeah this was the the, the regular workflows for what you just saw over there it looked like oh my god like progressed a lot but it didn't actually it's just a it's just some booleans here and there some sculpting here and there and that's it this is much more regular which i don't really like to be honest i'm gonna have to rework that for some reason so yeah so for the environments someone was asking on chat like your regular workflows for environments this is basically what i did on the um, on the demystifying post-production series and here's the cool thing this is all a single rock so the rock that I'm using is one of the rocks from our previous streams. It's this one. And I'm just creating an IMM out of this. So I can just go over here and just go create insert mesh new. And then maybe I want another that's like rotated like this and go create insert mesh append. And now we have the same rock in two different orientations. And maybe I want another one. I want to duplicate this one. And I want this to be... Maybe I want to flatten this like that. Or maybe actually scale it. Actually, yeah. Maybe I want to scale it down. And sculpt this. So maybe I can go clay build up. Actually go mallet. Whoops mallet fast and just start going at it and trying to clean this up a little bit mallet fast too so i'm gonna try 
pushing this. Be a little different and less stretchy because it looks kind of stretchy, right? So we're gonna have like a couple of them as an IMM brush. It just so it's a little different. It's like you want it very basically, very very base. So it's like it's like you want it to be flat in a sense, not when without a lot of detail. Because you want this to then be sculpted on top to create the irregularities or maybe surface noise, which is something I would use definitely for this. So let me just go a little bigger. I want to just, maybe I want to dynamesh this. Let me flatten this out. So like that. Go. There's a nice little cut over there. You can do stuff like this. It's just a slight cut there. It's no problem. So then we can go over with our flatten orb flatten edge and just start just irregularly trying to hide that stretching that we got from scaling it down. Right? You can just start just going over, doing some crazy stuff over here. Maybe I don't want this. I want this to be. this to be fairly flat whoops let's go mallet fast two just to flatten this out something like that right there we go Bondia. Wow, I got two Bondias. I don't know if if you're if you're going for Portuguese or s Spanish. Bondia is like with an N. But hey, how are you guys doing? So, right, so let's go in and go to, let's run it through clay polish real quick. Geometry, clay polish. There you go. And I mesh again. And we get this different rock over here. And let's go back to our IMM brush. And now we want this rock, which is like a smaller version of that rock, right? We want this to be from the top and then go and insert mesh append. And now we have three rocks. And that's how basically I made all of this. All of these rocks are the same rock, basically. Th these ones are actually the same rock. I didn't even create this shorter one. So it's literally the same rock just plucked over around and then I was planning on adding the granular detail after the fact which I can do if you look it up like turn on noise and then have something along these lines maybe something like this let's do a noise plug-in let's do Voronoi again I love the Voronoi noises so two and let's try to have this scale multiply. 
It's a very subtle one. Oh, the strength needs to go up. Something like that. Maybe this. This should be something like this. Yeah. And then mix. And I want to mix. Maybe the difference. So it would be something like that. Just to grab, to get some. Some variation going. If you want to go realism, that, that regular noise kind of works. But if you want to go fairly stylized, you want this to break up like that. So you're getting some degree of variation on your rocks, which kind of hides that. We could also just apply a stylized rock texture around. Just use some masking tools and masking features to, to get that working. So this is one of the reasons that you as an environment artist, you need to kind of focus on the texturing first, right? You need to get your textures done. Like you want to have your tiling textures done, your trim sheets, your whatever it is. From the ground textures to like rocks to like rock patterns for cliffs and stuff like that detail maps all of that stuff done beforehand so now i could have used that and it's gonna crash again don't tell me that nah there you go <gasps> it crashed dang it doesn't matter it's saved yes for some reason my computer is burning it is burning it's at 90 degrees Let's go. Yeah, it didn't recover. It doesn't matter. I'll just open the file like that. There you go. Here we are again. So basically, you wanna you wanna have your tiling texture. So now you could have used that to break up this repetition, or you can have a go and just sculpt this sculpt this entire section it's there it's a thing because it's it's big right so you can see the scale of the brush it's kind of you can't really change major shapes you can if you turn off dynamic you can just move this like just go move brush just move this entire section but i mean i don't usually do that i just stick to the imm thing and then just go Maybe do some trim dynamic here to get this, get rid of that right there. Maybe I want to, whoops, I want to do some clay build up over here. This is decimated. So this is also where you should just go and use Sculptors Pro, for example. It's decimated because an IMM, I didn't know how many I wanted to plug in there. The mesh is composed of too many polygons. Max Sculptress. Yeah, there you go. So Sculptress Pro has like a limit to polygons. So you might need to split this into like two sections if you want to use Sculptress Pro. So maybe something like this. And. Yeah, so this is like 800. And this is like. Oops. Ah, come on. There you go. So we get like 900 here and let's just split hidden and let's see if it works now. Stroke, turn on Sculptures Pro. There you go. It is working. So I could just do smooth brush first and then just start going crazy on this. you want to add some variation to this that is so you can actually sculpt this with your sculptors pro in something like that yep 
yes just create some like for example that is very noticeable so we might as well just go over here and start just blurring this down going over with the trim dynamic you can see like the topology is rather different over there you can turn on topological so you don't affect any other uh, meshes just go in and try to make this like that All right so you hide that a little bit let me turn off sculptors pro for now and just go or you could just dynamesh the entire thing just project to dynamesh There you go. So you're hiding those repeating patterns. And at the end of the day, you want to have something that's fairly uneven, right? So this is the workflow for like the rocks and composition. And it still has like poly groups. So I can still move them around after the fact. And you can still go like this and just, hey, I want this to be shorter. Or maybe I want to clip everything that's below the ground. So I can just do... Huh, let's see if this works. So let's do knife curve. Oh my God, is it gonna crash? Let's see. Let's try below the ground. There you go. So I have less polygons a little bit. So a little less polygons. There's a hole there for some reason. Hmm. Mm, okay. Yeah, because it welded both. Yeah, so you can just cut this. It doesn't really matter at this point. So it doesn't show right in the render. And for the ground, it's the same workflow I did for on the demystifying post production series. So it's literally the same thing. And it has poly, uh, poly, poly paint as well. It's literally, there's grass already on the scene without having any other kind of texturing so if we turn on live boolean this is what's there but if you render this if you just do a render it's going to show you just a few of them so there's like the fast preview thing that i need to check with the with this foliage but i mean this kind of works it doesn't need that much grass anyway so it's kind of if you turn on live boolean it just goes crazy gpu wise this kind of works so basically you get a plane I'm gonna recap this section so you get a plane like insert let's do insert plane 3d and scale this up like crazy I'm gonna turn off the floor turn off the fibers uh, the fibers not this and I did the the ro the stone thing after this, so the rocks were were put in place after the, the the ground. The ground is is the first thing you do in the environment. So something like this, scale it up, and then let's say okay. So I know that the the time machine is in the middle, right? So I want to divide this enough so I have geometry that I can cut, turn off the smooth, and then divide it up to like maybe a million. Right, delete lower, and now I'm gonna use the slice curve, not the knife curve, the slice curve. So I could have something, or maybe I could even have, I could even have a different workflow here. So I can just do, uh, let's see, maybe select lasso, and I want to have like a very particular shape. I want to have something like this, for example. Whoops this is outside I want to have something like that and yeah so now what I want to do is I want to have a polygroup here and I can with everything else hidden I can go to deformation and run a polish so now I'm polishing up this surface. And you can see it's getting 
Like maybe I want to polish my features. Maybe polish like super harshly. Like polish a lot. So polish. There you go. So now you have something like this as your terrain. And we can delete the rest so we can actually just, because if we want this to be like clean. We didn't want any aliasing, like crazy aliasing like that, you know. So we can even have one of these brushes over here, which is like, where is the brush? Brush, if you go to your smooth brush, there's a smooth groups br brush. Where's the smooth? Smooth. There's smooth groups. There it is if you don't have it already on your brush palette. And this is practically the same thing. I could just do, just go back before the polish, right? And then just do, I have two different poly groups and this is what's going on. A lot of aliasing, right? But with the smooth groups brush, I can just smooth it by hand like that. So just those intersections, it doesn't smooth anything else, just the, the the division between two polygroups. So I can actually control how much smooth does it have, how, s how polished is the division between the polygroups. So I'm gonna do something like this. Let me turn off the lines so I can see how clean they are. But I want this to be like super clean, something like this. Like going crazy like that. doing this all around our poly group and I want this to be like super clean so it's even better to do it this way because when we had the other poly group hidden it doesn't polish as much as much because there's no it's not actually doing a polish by groups it's just polishing whatever is not hidden so yes let's go doing a little bit of polish here, it doesn't need too much over there. This one needs a little bit. This one as well. So I want this to be kind of straightish, not as wobbly as it was before. What I did under the Mystifying post-production uh, episode was a little different. I did a slice workflow because it has a clean um, cut uh, edge loop already just by slicing. But if I'm doing this, uh, more like weird design usually you want to do like with the select maybe i can raise up like the size of this smooth so it smooths a lot so yeah so once you get this done you just tap that polygroup that you want and delete the rest and that's literally your terrain and then you have the ability to use deformers, to use project, to use whatever you want to deform your terrain and surface noise. So now we have this. So we're going to go over here, delete hidden. And now we can have surface noise. So I could do something like that. And maybe I used noise plugin, I think, with the granite and very low frequency. And the, this plugin scale could be something like that. And I want to, the difference, mix. Let's just check the plugin scale first. You could have something like that. So it's like elevated. It's like an elevated terrain kind of thing going. And the fact that it's it's not using a texture means that you can actually offset this here using these values. So you can offset on the Z in this case, on the X and on the Y. So you can actually have something. So offset like this. You can even rotate on the X, rotate on the Y, something like that. You can have this as like ground and then mix some basic noise over there this would be the grass and we could have this be green for example this is something i didn't show and this could be the brownish tint 
So you could have this like that. Maybe have your base color a certain color and then just apply a color immediately. So you can see how it looks before. Which is super useful. Something like this. Okay, so now once we have this, we can press OK. And now we have this kind of weird terrain over here. And we can go to our surface tab. If we apply to mesh, this is like an elevated terrain kind of effect. It's a little different than the other one. But we can still mask by noise. And the fact that I'm masking it by noise and then invert it. So this is going to be kind of like grass and dirt. So now I can go to fiber mesh. Preview. And you get fibers only on the places where the mask is. So in this case it would be the opposite way. So preview this. I'm going to open the same template I used for the demystifying post-production series. So it's right here. Fibers 29. And this is kind of weird. Yeah, it's facing sideways, which is weird. This is the mask. Yeah, this surface noise is not exactly how I had before, but it doesn't matter. So this is kind of the workflow, and then you can tweak this as you like, like maybe more fibers, maybe something like crazy like this, right? Or maybe let's try something else, like this grass one, or maybe the flowers that I had. Huh, I didn't save the flowers. Yeah, but there you go. So this is kind of the workflow. And then once you accept, let me just push. Let me just actually do this correctly. Let's go back to the surface noise and see. Let's see if we can. Just get some regular noise, not not like I used to with uh so you can have something like this maybe. Put some dirt over there. Maybe we don't need that much strength. Or maybe we do. Yeah, there we go. So now I get something like this. Uh, actually, yeah, let's get something like this. So now we can apply this. And if we apply these surf, the surface noise, we get kind of like a terrain. And then we mask by noise, invert this, and we get kind of our, yeah, more or less. But we get the, the mask for our fibers. So now if we go with fiber mesh, open this up, we get some patches of grass here and there. And here's a cool thing, since we have this mask, one cool thing is that before we even do the fibers, we can actually poly paint this. So I want this to be grass actually. And I want the rest to be kind of like dirt. So maybe, just maybe, I want to have a color for that. So I want this to be filled. Fill object. And then I want the opposite to be filled with like this green, greenish tint. Maybe that was too much. Yep. 
Yeah, something like that. Right? And here's the thing. You can even use some textures to project there in terms of like color. I think I could choose in the Yeah, so for that, so you're you th you're saying like you have thickness, right? And then you want to smooth the inside of the of the shoe, and then you don't want to smooth the outside, right? So for that, there's a thing here on the on the brush for your smooth. You, you said you're using smooth stronger, right? So if you're using smooth strong, any brush actually, you can just go over here to auto masking, and there's a, a button here that says back face mask. So this means that whenever you're pressing sometimes, because ZBrush, you have to imagine this radius being like a sphere instead of a circle, right? So if I, I do some sculpting here, if there's like a little bit of a mesh there, it's going to get affected, right? So if you have this turned on though, back face masking, it's not going to sculpt on the back once you sculpt. So just turn on back face masking. I have a little button here for that. So brush, auto masking, back face masking. Turn it on and that might solve your problem. Yeah, you could mask outside manually, but that's technically what auto masking is doing. If you auto masking is automatically masking for you. So if something is like flipped the other the other way, uh huh. Is it still doing it on the other side? I mean, I, I would have to take a look at the mesh. I can't say I mean, I can't, it, it basically, if you have something that's like, uh, let's say, let me go over here. Let me change this to like, um, I don't know, like a cube, whatever, make poly mesh 3d. And this cube is going to have thickness. So I'm going to actually duplicate this like that and have this cut like that split just for the sake of this example let's just split unmasked points i'm going to use this as a subtractive this should be like oh it's in solo mode there you go so now if i do a boolean here let me just create a folder i like doing booleans with folders there you go. And now if I boolean with dynamic subdivision, there's the mesh, right? So what you're saying is something like uh, you're sculpting here, right? You're sculpting on this side and it's sculpting on the other side. Is that it? So again, once you go to brush, you, you have to keep pressing shift. Otherwise, you're like, let's say I'm, I'm with my clay build up brush, right? And now I have smooth stronger. Let me go to your smooth stronger brush or smooth stronger, right? So once you go to brush and you let go of shift, now you're tweaking the clay buildup brush. You're not tweaking the smooth stronger brush anymore. So you have to press and hold shift now. And while holding shift, press back face mask. If I hold, if I let go of shift, see what's going on? It's, I'm in the clay buildup brush now. I'm not in the smooth brush anymore, but the smooth brush already has back face masking. So if I sculpt like this, you can see what's going on. It's sculpting on both sides, right? There you go. If I smooth now, I'm only smoothing on one side because the smooth has back face masking turned on, but not the clay build up brush. So for that, if I turn off back face masking, now I'm smoothing everything. I mean, I'm not having that bug, so I don't know. I don't know. It might be something on our, on your end, maybe on the model itself. You know, there's multiple reasons for something like that to happen. But, you know, I'm not having that issue. I'm just doing it. You know, maybe I want to do trim dynamic and go over to like over here to back face masking. And here I am just filling in this part of the hole without messing that out of the side. It depends on, on the situation, right? So 
I would have to see, you know, whatever it is, your case in your example, right? So yeah, so going back to this, uh, to the terrain, to this terrain that we have, we have polypaint now. And here's a cool masking tip for you guys. There's a masking in the masking menu. There's some, where's the masking? Uh, masking menu. If you go to mask by color, you can actually mask by polypaint. So you can go, I want a mask that is just the green. So polypaint, and now you can actually tap over here. Just click and drag and pick a color, you know? So now the mask is only on the green. So if I go OK, and now I could actually even do mask by polypaint, do this, and then have another that would be maybe decrease the tolerance here to something like just those edges on the top, you see? And maybe have another that has like just a little bit of that section. So there's some areas over there that don't get the masking. So it's basically color IDs, you know, you're using poly paint, uh, using poly paint to, to do like color IDs. So then when you press OK, you get that mask over there. And now you go to fibers. Where's the fibers? Fiber mesh. Fiber mesh. Fiber mesh. There you go. And now you press preview and it's only wherever there is a mask, basically. So you could even blur this out and then preview. Maybe I want like a ton of like foliage. And there we go. We have a little grass field and we want maybe a different material for this. For this, I used, I think I used a basic material, uh, a little tweaked, but I did use something that was different. Did I use a matte cap? Don't remember. I don't remember if I used them. Uh, a matte cap. What did I use for that? I think I used this, but then I went into the material and I, I tweaked the, the diffuse over here just for the foliage. Whoops. So like something like that, maybe less specular and a lot more in the diffuse and less ambient light or maybe a lot more ambient light. So something like that. And then I applied to this. So accept no no fast preview and now these foliage thingies oh it's not this one is it hmm oh there it is it's this one so th in these I, I usually i go to m and then just color fill object and now this has that material so now if i go back to my orb clay Everything has the orb clay except for the for the foliage. So you can have whatever effect you want on your foliage. Can you make it more thin? It's the same thing, dude. I'm I'm telling you. Like if I go over here again, let's do it then. Let's try it. I mean, I may be wrong. There might be a bug. I don't know. I mean for those those kind of stuff, I would I would advise you to watch Ian's stream, Ian Robinson. He's, he's actually working on the development of ZBrush, so you can ask that question to him, and he's more qualified than I am. So, yeah, let's make it super thin, like this, right? So, it's super thin, Boolean with dynamic. Several warnings, okay, so this got me a warning. A few warnings, actually. But nothing that fix mesh can't fix right so let's do dynamesh it's super thin right so if i go to clay build up brush and i start sculpting it's going to push the other the other side right doesn't matter how thin it is as long as it's it's thin enough to be pushed from one side to the other if i turn on back face masking let's go back face mask it doesn't do anything there because it doesn't see the geometry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect that geometry because it doesn't see it, right? It, because it's it's flipped. If I do this, there's nothing there. 
Only when you look at it can you see because of the normals, right? So same thing goes for the smooth brush. So if I do something here like this and then I start smooth and I turn on back face masking, I'm only smoothing on this side, not on that side. See that? I'm only smoothing this side. Sure, sure. Send it through, uh, through this cord though. So just go into the server. I don't know if you're on the server. Are you in the server? Let me check. If not, here's another shameless plug. <laughs> here's another shameless plug and there's the server. Just go into the server, send me a private message with your problem. I'll try to fix it. But again, it's like, ask again, ask either Ian, Paul, or send a ticket. If you're having an issue like that, just send in, submit a ticket to, to Maxon and the ZBrush team. And if there's a bug, they'll, they'll, they would want to know actually. So you're kind of helping them out as well. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So this was how I did that thing. That whole section. Let me just hide this section because this isn't the original one. This is. Right? So this is how I did these things over here. Like that. Oops. This entire scene. At least it's not finished at all by a long shot. Like I'm still missing a couple of things. Especially in the spaceship. I'm going to try to work some more on this uh, after the stream. And... Yeah, so, and then once we're done with this, we start detailing, I'm going to have some cool news for you guys. So, yeah. Is there some an option in the brush depth inside the activist step mask? Move the bottom circle to the middle point and one smooth. Yeah, but that's different. That's a whole different feature. That's the, the brush depth mod modifier. It has nothing to do with backface masking. Backface masking is a masking feature, technically. You're just using the masking in the in the brush. You know how you have uh, surface noise for the whole thing, like the whole subtool, and then you have surface noise for your brush? It's kind of like that. It's like a masking feature that's being applied in the brush as you, you sculpt. All right, I would have to take a look. I mean, I have no visual idea of what the problem is. That might be the, the issue, right? Yeah, but I mean, I am happy to help whatever I can, but it's not like, uh, yeah. All right, cool. Send me on Discord. Uh, guys, I got to run. I got to run. It's 9.30 in Portugal, 9.30 p.m., I hope you guys like this. I know this was a kind of a slower stream than last week. But if you guys want to find out more about like IMM brush workflows for like environment art and all the other Shanigan workflows that you know I do in ZBrush, just tune in Monday in the Pixelogic ZBrush channel for the Demystifying Post-Production Episode 2, where I'll be going over how to use IMM uh, meshes, let's say a modular kit kind of workflow towards IMM and IMM curve brushes to create the uh, the rest of the of the details in the in the environment that I was modeling last week. So I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. And again, the mystifying post production on Monday. I'll see you then. And if you can't make it, there's always the the recording online. And for some reason, if the people that posted the questions to me like for me to, to kind of clear out if they're not here again uh it's on youtube so you might just scroll back and forth it's the useful thing about this is that's always there so you can always go back and watch the, the the questions being answered so that's cool and yeah okay guys i'm out and i hope you guys have a nice weekend and i'll see you next monday see you later Bye bye